So for this blog, I actually wanted to have a look at the language we use around sex toys. That might seem really minor, but a lot of the words we use to do with the subject of sex are very loaded. Um, by loaded, I mean they can really change how we see certain subjects and topics to do with human sexuality. A great example of this one that I'm very passionate about is losing virginity. We constantly talk about losing virginity and I'm like, what are we actually losing? Um, not everybody breaks a hymen. Um, so why are we still using this idea of loss of innocence? And what's the opposite of innocence? Guilty? So when you have sex for the first time, you're guilty? As you can see that there's a lot of ideas associated with that term of how we see our first sexual experience that possibly we could change if we change the language. So being now a sex toy retailer, if you want to call me that, and having my little drnikishock.com.au, it is something that I constantly look at, is the language that I'm using. I have um, changed my site to be more inclusive of how people identify their gender. So instead of saying for him, for her, for couples, although I still use the couples tag because it's really popular, but I think like everything is on the couples tag or like what I see that everything you could use for someone else. But even things like for him, for her, well, what does it mean to be a him? A him could have a vulva these days. What does it mean to be a her? So instead I use penis over and penis owner and vulva owner and anal products. So we're looking at where you're stimulating in the body rather than actually looking at someone's gender. But a bigger one than that is actually the term sex toys. So when I first kind of started off being a sexologist and even kind of having a relationship with the sex toy world, a lot of the language we were using were things like pleasure products, which we still do use, um, adult pleasure products. And I'm very welcoming of that. And I used to be very much of the mindset of that was the only language that we should use, right? Pleasure products, because we're trying to get away from being smutty and we want to bring them out into the, the mainstream. Now actually being more immersed in that world, I realized that there shouldn't be a shame in calling these products sex toys. That instead of trying to change the language to take away this negative stigma and taboo, let's call them sex toys and actually change the way that we see them and purchase them and buy them and promote them so that they're no longer in the smut and the taboo. And also too, when we have a look at what these products do, yes, Adult pleasure products um, describe what they are. They are products that cause pleasure for adults. But I also find that sex toys are a lot of fun. And when we think of the word toys, it's the things as kids that we used to play with, right? Like kids play with toys. And you think about your favorite toy and how exciting it was and you know what it was like to get a new toy. That's the same way that I see sex toys. It's a toy for an adult and that we use it to have sex with or have sex with somebody else. I feel like it is a term that gets way more to the point, but also has this positivity because we're using this notion of toys. You know, when we were younger, I know when I was a kid, it was Barbie or G.I. Joe, I think. I want to say G.I. Jane, G.I. Joe, like the little doll with the camouflage gear. Well, as an adult, we should be able to have toys too. Where's our play? And playtime is really important to incorporate in your sex life. It doesn't always have to be smutty and sinful and even seductive. It can be a lot of fun and pleasure and pleasure, pleasurable, pleasure. You know what I'm saying? So I think that we kind of need to have a look at the language we use around a lot of these things and in particular sex toys. And I think I'm going to revert back because I used to be very against using that word and I'm not going to be scared to call sex toys, sex toys. Um, and I'm going to call a spade a spade. I once gave a, talk at a sex toy conference and it was looking at you know people's fears around purchasing these products and what retailers could be doing to improve how they place them and advertise them and sell them in shops and someone actually had a go at me because I was using the term sex toys um, and they said oh we, we like to call them adult pleasure products which again I have no problem with calling them adult pleasure products but my point back to that person who asked that question, they asked it kind of in a very, uh, I wanna say aggressive, but it was like trying to catch me out. Um, the general public or much of the general public are still referring to these products as sex toys. So if that's what they're referring to them as, then why don't we still call them sex toys, but just try and change the association with them. So no matter what you call them, adult pleasure products, adult products, adult health aids, we even kind of get into that side of things as well. But when you hear me call them sex toys, I want you to think about 
what it was like to have a toy as a kid and how much fun it is to have a toy as an adult that you can use in your sex life. So thank you. Now, if you want to hear more vlogs like this, uh, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, that you like my Facebook page if you haven't, and you follow me on Instagram because I'm going to be posting a lot of this content and you don't want to miss it, right? Okay, thank you. Bye.